Barrel-Aged Games as a title that I saw, and now I think you might want to see it. Moonshine Empire. This is for one to four players ages 10 and up, and should take about 45 to 90 minutes to play. In an old tavern, in the middle of a gator-infested swamp, lives a shady old moonshiner named Pappy. For as long as anyone cares to remember, he has been providing the best darn moonshine on this side of the Mississippi. However, old Pappy is ready to retire and is holding something of a competition to see who's got the gumption to take over his moonshine empire. Distill, move, and deliver moonshine to Pappy's tavern and earn money by selling it to his customers. Use that money to bribe him for gear at his auctions. Watch out for the police, though, and the gators as they creep around the tavern. Earn points exploring the swamp, delivering shine, or by completing challenges. Choose your strategy quickly as Pappy's challenge is over in one night, and whoever scores the most points will claim Pappy's Moonshine Empire. <laughs> wow, okay, so a board game based on moonshining. Kind of reminds me of the Dukes of Hazzard. Makes me think of Uncle Jesse in his, in his youth. <laughs> But really, come on, a uh, uh, prohibition era theme? I, I don't, I don't know many board games. I, I actually, I can't think of any board games at all that have a a, a pro, pro, prohibition era theme to it. You know, it's, a, it's 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 an almost never used concept. I'm glad to see that it is used. It kind of gives me a feeling, a sensation. Back in the '80s, when I was a kid playing the old TSR role playing game, Gangbusters. Yeah. From what I've read, if you enjoy resource management games, then this just might be the kind of game that you're going to want to learn more about. It's Moonshine Empire is a balanced game, they say, between the resource managements that you have to work with, such as ingredients, the distilling equipment, distribution networks, everything, just like you have to worry about the police and the gators. Now, the game also claims that it has this uniquely themed strategy for swamp vehicles. I have a few vehicle games. I've seen a lot more. I don't recall seeing a swamp vehicle in any of them. I'm interested. Now, from what I've been gathering about this title, it seems that it is geared to involve strategy and decision making. I mean, like, on the fly kind of decision making. I enjoy those kind of games because they keep you on your toes, they keep you thinking, they keep the strategy flowing. Now, this game does have a sort of high-risk uh, element to it. You know, not just with the running of the shine and, and dealing with the auctions, but uh, in general, this game is geared, uh, pardon the pun, to reward high-stake risks. But at the same time, there's going to be a lot of really low crashes from these high-stake chances if, you, if, you, if it doesn't pan out for you. But yeah, the game, the balance, the strategy in the game, in fact, with this whole almost gambling mentality of going high stakes and when not to go high stakes is an interesting balance I would like to try. So obviously, whenever you have competitive games like this, they're going to be kind of cutthroat. And this, this, besides being cutthroat, does offer, they say, a lot of opportunity for back and forth player interaction, not just take that style stuff, but actually building yourselves, your own empires together. So there's a little bit of, just a touch, just a, a little bit of cooperativeness in this game, but don't let that fool you. This is a competitive game uh, at its core from beginning to end. Another thing that this game introduces uh, and uses to a very strong effect from what I've been told is the use of a random event deck. Now, this may not be unique to the game, but not every game has it. And this is utilizing that to its fullest, allegedly. And it's going to be there not only to throw stones in your path, so to speak, but also to give you rewards in and of itself. And honestly, when you have something like an event deck in a game, it is going to shoot up that replayability, which is highly important if you enjoy a game because you're going to want to play it again and again and not get bored of it. I think this is overall a very interesting concept. I'm glad to see something like this. There's not enough games uh, about Prohibition era style, uh, you know, liquor running. <laughs> so, from what I've seen and read, uh, it does seem to capture this element, this feel, this theme, 
very well. But don't take my word for it. Please don't take any influencer's word for it and don't ever call me an influencer. No, let's, let's be informed. Let's get information and deal with that on our own. You know, but as far as something like a game goes, one of the best things that you can do is not listen to reviewers, my friends, but watch playthroughs. The title you're interested in, find some playthroughs online and watch it. It's a much better way to determine if you're going to enjoy the game than just some talking head telling you basically what they were paid to say. So yeah, be, be informed, not influenced. And get informed on Moonshine Empire.